Hi, and welcome to another episode of Making an MMO in Go, where we livestream and document all of the challenges, bugs, and code produced by me struggling through an obviously very difficult project. Today's episode is about reorganization. When we left off last time, we had built an entity component system framework and converted our struct-based game objects into their individual components, but the code we changed to accomplish this was only in the client binary. Now, because we need the same physics simulation to run on both the client and the server, we will need to ensure that our code base is set up so that it is easy to write a server and client with the same functionality. The biggest challenge here is figuring out what code is client-specific, server-specific, or common. Once that is done, we need to build a common mechanism by which our game loop can run. Obviously the server has no rendering information, so we will need to create slightly different game loops depending on if we are the client or server. So here's what we did. We moved the sprite and keybinds components to the engine slash rendering package. Since both of these rely on OpenGL, we don't want these accessed by the server. Next we migrated all of the common code to build our world into the main MMO package so that our, both our client and server could share the logic. Finally, in our ECS package, we built a new system struct which represents a unit of work to perform in the game. This way we can easily and dynamically create different arrays of systems for our client and server binaries. Then when we want to execute a game loop, we can iterate over the array of systems. Sometimes we want different systems run at different times. For example, on the client we want to collect input and render as fast as possible, but for the physics we want to execute at a fixed frame rate. To accomplish this, I've made three different arrays of systems. One for collecting the input, one for executing the physics, and one for rendering the frame. I think this is a naive approach and won't last forever, but for now I think it's good enough. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and check the video description to follow me on Twitch for future live streams. A link to part of the VOD for this episode will also be in the description. I had a recording issue so the start of it is unfortunately missing. You can also check out my GitHub to view the code directly.